12 o'clock straight up on the East Coast. It is a Thursday edition of Middays with Q. I'm your host as always, Rich Canunas, Mi Hermano, Angel Martinez behind the glass, keeping us upright, if you will, producing this show. 60 minutes to play with. We'll take you up to 1 o'clock straight up on this very busy Thursday. And, of course, coming at you live via Riptide Media Network and 1029 The Game, part of Broad Street South. Hope everyone having a good 30th of May. We're getting ready to kiss May goodbye. The dog days of summer, June, July, August, NBA, NHL. We got a mess that is the New York Metropolitans in baseball. We'll dive into that. <clears throat> Jonathan Marshall is going to join me around 20 after 12 to get into the NBA. And I'll say this, um, before we get into the NBA, you also have the NHL playoffs that, as I mentioned, game five tonight, I think is a pivotal game for the New York Rangers in that series, knotted up a two piece with the Florida Panthers. Um, but as always, you guys can also uh, let your voice be heard. You can tweet at me at rich Q on Q on X or seven, two, seven, eight, five, eight, six, six, five. Oh, that'll get you involved, bring something to the table as always. So <clears throat> I was thinking about this early this morning. Um, with the NBA, and I guess we'll focus on my backyard for a second, not really with the Knicks, but the Philadelphia 76ers, because there seems to be this, I guess, this growing feeling now <clears throat> that, and and I don't know, you guys tell me where you stand with this, because I've got a couple thoughts. You've got this prevailing thought, because the window is closing Quickly with the Philadelphia 76ers, right? With Embiid and Maxi, we know about some of the bad contracts. We know about Harris. Obviously, we know about their uh, loss to the Knicks in the playoffs. And the thought is now you got to bring in that big time score. Maybe you got to add that big time two way, uh, you know, forward slash guard, the guy that can get you that 18 to 20 if Maxi or Embiid falter. There's this. I guess buzz going that the Philadelphia 76ers would love to give Jimmy Butler a max contract. The Philadelphia 76ers would love to try to make a move for Paul George. The Philadelphia 76ers would love to try to bring in LeBron James. <clears throat> Folks, let me just squash that pipe dream <clears throat> for you right now. Jimmy Butler's not coming to Philly. Paul George is not coming to Philly. LeBron James is not coming to Philly. And there's a couple reasons why I believe a lot of this is just smoke and mirrors and BS. When you look at the NBA, and we're seeing it right now in these playoffs, you've got teams that have that one-two punch in the NBA, right? You, you've got the guard, you've got the center, you've got the, the, the far. I mean, back in the day, teams like the Bulls, the Pistons, uh, the Lakers, the Celtics, they were all spoiled, right? Because you had water wall Hall of Famers. In the NBA, you need the Batman has to have the Robin. Robin needs the Batman. You need that one-two punch. Sixers have it. But if you look at how just laughable within that organization, that franchise has been, the way they handle certain things. I mean, years ago was injuries. Year ago was load management year ago, it was, um, you know, the GMs, you know, the tenures of the Allen brands, you know, the, um, you know, horrible moves, right. The, the, the Brett Brown's talking about going star hunting, the doc rivers implosions and blowing leads and series leads. And now all of a sudden, boom, you bring in another head coach, uh, in Nick nurse. I don't believe star players look at Philly as if it's a destination. I don't believe star players look at the Philadelphia 76ers and say, yeah, we want to play with Embiid. Maybe they believe they want to play with Maxi, but I just don't believe they feel that Embiid's the player that's going to take him over the top. And I think a lot of that has to do with Embiid's habits. I think a lot of that has to do with Embiid being soft at times. I think a lot of that has to do with Embiid being a front runner. Uh, Embiid is not the type of player. Embiid gave you a little hard and esh, if you will, <clears throat> during these playoffs, right? He didn't want the ball times. You're not going to win in the NBA if your star player, if your face of the franchise doesn't want the ball. So I think this pipe dream of going after Paul George or LeBron James, uh, look, they got cap space. We know that. Do these players want to go from the West Coast to the East Coast? <clears throat> I don't really know. And it's really mind-boggling when you think about it because now the Lakers appear to really be – that flirtation has gotten heavy right now with J.J. Redick, right? So it does appear that J.J. Redick is going to be the next head coach of the Lakers. This is something I'll talk with Jonathan Marshall, who covers the league. 
WMUR sports reporter anchor up in New Hampshire. I'll get his thoughts on this because I think it's a move that's going to implode. I think it's a move that's going to backfire. Uh, I don't think it's the right fit. I think J.J. Redick is too closely removed from the game. And I think what happens is now you've got your friendship. You do the podcast, everything LeBron James. I think that is just, it's built to just implode. And we've seen what the Lakers have done over the last several years. Uh, the Mavericks look to close out Minnesota finally as the Boston Celtics await them. Uh, Celtics obviously coming out of the Eastern Conference Finals. So you got one team set in the NBA Finals. I do like the Mavericks because I love what I'm seeing with Doncic and Kyrie. But <clears throat> as I said, we'll get into a lot more NBA with Jonathan in about 10 or so minutes. Uh, the other story that last night <clears throat> was really fun to watch because as a Yankees fan, I always enjoy what's going on with the Mets. I actually take great enjoyment in watching the New York Mets just be an absolute mess. And you had the situation last night, and I don't know if you guys caught it. I know, I'm sure Pete talked about it. I know Angel was talking about it um, as well on his show. You got a reliever that not only imploded on the mound and was ejected, but threw his glove into the stands. And quite frankly, listen, I I don't care that, um, you know, uh, Jorge Lopez um, threw his glove in the stands, but What's going on after the fact was after the game, once again, the Mets lose, uh, you know, they're, they're a squad that has just been, they had that five game losing streak. They came back, they beat the Giants four to three. Now they've got a three game slide. Uh, they're 16 back already in the NOEs. They've dropped three, uh, three straight. I think it had their last 11. They're a bad team. They're a bad franchise. Alonzo's hurt. McNeil's a bust, a clown. Lindor's not hustling. They got issues. The Mets have issues. But then after the game, you got Lopez sitting up there. And I don't know if this is your classic case of, you know, it got lost in translation, no pun intended, didn't have a translator, misconstrued. Um, But, you know, his comments were simply, listen, I'm playing for one of the worst teams in baseball right now. And I know there was a little backtracking, if you will. There was this debate, this argument of, okay, well, wait, what did he really say? Listen, your guess is as good as mine. If you if you really break down, if you're talking about you know him having an accent, English not being his first uh, language, some issues, it sounded as though he was saying that you know teammate, right? Worst teammate, not I'm on the worst team or the worst franchise in baseball. And I think this is where you have that fine line where you clarify a player's statement or slash his intent then maybe you need to get someone to translate. Now, I jumped the gun. I immediately went on X and I was like, you know what? You got to designate for assignment this guy. You got to cut him. It comes to pass that we learned that Lopez was dealing with some personal issues. Lopez was put on the IL a couple years ago with the Twins to deal with mental um, issues as well. Um, But again, he said, whoever hear me say teammate and what I said on the situation, I've been the worst teammate. Thanks, media, for making it worse. I mean, look, the Mets pretty much already had an idea of what they were going to do, but it's just typical Mets, right? It's just typical franchise that is just a laughing stock for all the payroll, for all the money, for all the star power. They can't get it done on the field. And you even go back to a season ago, you lose your reliever your best reliever, one of the best relief pitchers in a freak accident during the World Baseball Classic before the season starts, and that's a snowball. It's an absolute snowball. This team is starting to show signs of that 93, 94, that 95 kind of Met squad. But part of me actually felt bad for Lopez, but I understand stuff gets lost in the sauce, lost in translation. But it also just shows you how, you know, when we think about it, we are very quick. We want to judge We want to jump on the player right away. And then you have to kind of take a step back and you have to kind of read the room a little bit. But the Mets are just a bad franchise right now. They're playing really bad baseball. Uh, I do believe right now, even with Acuna being lost again for the season for the Braves, the Phillies, that's their division to win and or lose. And they're probably going to run away with that division. Atlanta's still very good, but I can see the Phillies winning the NL East. So we'll sprinkle a little more baseball in. As the show goes on, as I mentioned, Jonathan Marshall around 1220 and the other story, and I guess really it's not a story, but 
I definitely want to get your guys' thoughts on this. So being right down the shore, right? And we're talking 25 minutes away uh, from shore points, you know, 30 from Ocean City, 40 from Wildwood, Cape May. You got Longport, you got Linwood, you got Margate. The story comes out a couple of days ago where uh, the Kelseys were out. Uh, Jason Kelsey and his wife were out and they were trying to go to dinner. And I guess you had an overzealous fan, wanted to take a photo, wanted to take a picture. And uh, it got to the point where, you know, they were like, hey, we just want to enjoy a nice little quiet night out, date out. And And then the woman goes, you know, full on Karen, acts like a jerk, acts like a jackass, uh, starts screaming. You know, you'll never be allowed in the city of Margate uh, again. I mean, listen, you go to Margate, you got to pay three bucks. You go through a frigging little bridge that's been sitting there for 75 years then you got to pay another buck 52 dollars coming back um so you know again um <laughs> like, like you know it's not like one of these things where you say to yourself hey man i'm gonna make a trip down to margate nice nice spot don't get me wrong but she was so out of line the mayor comes out it just got me thinking where is that fine line where is that fine line when it's okay to be a fan it's okay to be fanatical about your team. We're, we're all like that. But you watch some of these guys that are pushing kids out of the way to grab foul balls or home run balls. They're trying to push kids or they're, they're pointing off their kids to try to get interviews um, or, uh, you know, uh, signatures, you know, sign the merchandise. Then they're going to turn around and sell it on eBay. They're going to point it off. Then you got people wanting photos and photos. Like, shouldn't there be this, I guess this, um, unspoken rule, right? Unspoken rule. If it, this is not the fifties and sixties where the guys would go out afterwards, hang out at the bar, have dinner, Maggio, Monroe, take a photo. Here you go. Have a smoke, have a cigar, have a drink, be on your way. It's not like the sixties, seventies. It's not like where the players, you know, hockey players, I've said this for years, the most accessible hockey players, the most accessible. They'll do interviews. They'll do meet and greets. They'll do fundraising charities. They'll do. Um, uh, they'll, they'll go out and about. They'll do appearances. They'll jump on the phone. They'll call the radio show. They'll get on the TV. They're accessible. Some of these other players don't want to be bothered. And, and I understand that. And I know the pushback will be, well, you make millions of dollars. You're in the spotlight. Listen, I have absolutely no problem with... Kelsey's wife stepping in and basically getting in this woman's face because you've got to have boundaries. And we've kind of lost that. We've lost boundaries when it comes to being a fan in sports. And it almost gets to the point where I don't blame some of these athletes for acting the way they do. I, I, I honestly don't. And when I say I don't blame them for acting the way they do, I'm not talking about cruelty to animals or domestic. I'm talking about, Hey, someone gets in your face. You know what? The guy gets too close. That's my space. I'm not sitting here saying crack him in the jaw, but you can bark back at him. And we've lost that. We've lost that. And I think as we were doing the crossover and I mentioned the angel because everything now is so pronounced and prominent on social media right away, get the camera out, get the iPhone out. Put it on X, put it on TikTok, put it on IG. Let's make a big deal about it. Oh my God, can you believe this? Jason Kelsey, you know, he's classless and his wife. How about the woman acting like a fool, acting like an idiot, acting like a jackass, acting like a crazed person, obviously had too much to drink, right? I mean, it's just to the point where if you acknowledge the athlete, again, you know, give them a heads up. I can't, I, I always tell my buddies, I'm like, look, man, I've, I've got numbers in my phones, right? Just relationships I, I I've cultivated with players over the years and coaches and former players and current coaches. And, and I would never, you know, kind of cross, I've had people hit me up. Hey man, can you get, can you get so-and-so to get me, you know, no, I'm not going to do that because <laughs> it takes years to build up trust. And all of a sudden you want me to hit up a player and say, Hey man, do me a favor. I'm sending you a football sign it for me so I can send it back to my friend. Get the hell out of here. But you also have to respect the boundaries, you know, doing so many meet and greet with players, some of them really kind of understand it, but then you can tell some are very uncomfortable. And this is a situation where you just got a husband and wife, a retired player that's well known, right? Who's just trying to have a night out 
an enjoyable night out with his wife. And again, the fans, we crossed that line because we have to have that photo. We've got to post it. We got to let everyone see where we're at. We got to, Oh my God. I just ran into JC Kelsey. Oh my God. I just ran into Travis Kelsey. Oh my God. I took a, you know, a shot behind, uh, you know, uh, 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 Swift and, and Kelsey here in Kansas city. It's like, come on, man, back up, give a little space, give a little space, let them enjoy the, have a moment. I can tell you this. I, there was, this was probably six or seven years ago. And there was, there were several very notable NBA players, extremely notable NBA players that people had no clue rented houses in Ocean City, New Jersey. Um, and through a mutual contact, they're like, hey, you want to go meet these guys? And, you know, I, I was like, sure, not a problem. And I can tell you it was maybe a five-minute conversation, didn't ask for an autograph, didn't ask for a photo. Why? Because I knew they did not want people to know where they were at. So it was this mutual understanding, mutual respect. I'm not wasn't looking for the clout, looking to chase the cloud and post this and post that. You have to, you have to draw that fine line and you've got to respect boundaries. And unfortunately, we haven't been doing that. We've been doing a real piss poor job with that. I got some tweets. I got some comments on Facebook. I get to them as well. 18 past 12 o'clock hour. Just crank it up on a Thursday edition of Middays with Q coming at you live inside the, yeah, we'll call them the Jersey Riptide Media Network. See, we're not spoiled. We don't have Tampa Studios. <laughs> I'm waiting for the Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> We don't have West Palm or Miami or Fort Myers or Tampa. We've got Jersey Studios. We got 10 minutes over the bridge. Atlantic City Studios. Across the pond, as we like to say. Yes, exactly. Hey, don't forget, download the Sports Radio 1029 app. Follow Angel as well on X, Broad Street South. Uh, great lineup. Pete Shepard, Monday to Friday, 7 to 10. Martinez Company, 10 to 12. And then myself, Middays with Q, 12 to 1. All right, Jonathan Marshall on the other side. We'll talk a little NBA. I'll get his thoughts on if star players really want to play in Philly. I know he will have some thoughts, opinions, strong comments on that. J.J. Redick to the Lakers. Ty Lu getting paid. And we'll kind of go around the NBA. And we'll talk a little bit about the playoffs right now. And does it matter at this point if it's Dallas or Minnesota? against the Boston Celtics. So Jonathan Marshall from WMUR coming back on the other side. Right now, our country feels divided, but there's a place where people are coming together. I got to tell you, I was nervous to talk to someone so different than me. Me too, but I'm glad we are. Love Has No Labels and One Small Step are helping people with different political views, beliefs, and life experiences come together through conversation. And it feels good. Wow, your story is so... Uh, Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> When people actually sit down, talk, and listen to one another, they can break down boundaries and connect as human beings. At lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step, you can listen to amazing, life-changing conversations and find simple tools to start a conversation of your own. I know one thing. This conversation gives me hope. It gives me a lot of hope, too. Take a step toward bringing our country and your community together by having the courage to start a conversation at lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step. A message from StoryCorps, Love Has No Labels, and the Ad Council. People do some pretty cool things in their 40s and 50s. Why should saving for retirement be any different? I mean, they go back to college. Learn new instruments. Start skateboarding. Whoa! Okay, maybe that one's not for everybody, but saving for retirement is. With aceyourretirement.org, you can get on track with your retirement savings no matter your age. Just have a three-minute chat with Avo, the friendly digital retirement coach from AARP. You'll get personalized recommendations based on your input that are easy to understand and work with your lifestyle. It's quick, easy, and free. Plus, it's sponsored by AARP, so you know they got your back. Woohoo! Snarly move, Dad. Thanks, sweetie. So wherever you are in your retirement savings journey, head to aceyourretirement.org and start chatting with Avo today. That's aceyourretirement.org. A message from AARP and the Ad Council. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A Teenager. 
learning the lingo. Today, I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, it's exactly like saying, that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying, totally, just shorter. As in, I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're, um, rad just the same. To learn more, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. This is the story of a very special woman. In a matter of seconds, she turned herself into a great mathematician or an entrepreneur. Her knowledge was limitless and still is. She could also make monsters disappear, especially those that lurked in the shadows under the bed. Once, this woman put back together a teenage girl's broken heart, which had been shattered in a thousand pieces, just by giving her a bear hug. She masqueraded as a regular person at work, but as a superhero at home. Everyone knows her as Gabriella. I still call her mom. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need to help, complete with tips and resources, at aarp.org caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Best of both worlds in there, man. You get all the good ones, you know? It's a hell of a video there. Hey, 12-23, uh, as it will take you up to 1 o'clock straight up on the East Coast, a... Thursday edition Middays with Q. Rich Quinone is here at Rich Q on Q. And of course, from our wonderful friends over at Riptide Media Network and powered by 1029 The Game, part of Broad Street South. Uh, I mentioned a lot going on in the NBA. I threw it out there, you know, as uh, Brett Brown said, star watching, star players. Um, do they want to play in Philadelphia? There he is. Our guy, Jonathan Marshall, WMUR, sports anchor and reporter, covers the association. And um, uh, appreciate a couple moments, pal. How you been? I'm good, Q. How you doing? I'm doing real well. I mean, I got graphics. I got lower thirds. I just come on and I talk like the radio days. Um, by the way, for the listening audience, <laughs> this is kind of interesting. So years ago when I was on 1290 The Ticket in Delaware, yeah. and I'm going to say that was probably 2000, and we had our little run. I would say six, seven, eight, not maybe seven, eight, nine. Uh, Jonathan was my quote intern. <laughs> I mean, think about that for a minute. You you were a younger man back then, Q. <laughs> <laughs> yes, You've yes. Up, um, I'm proud of you. <laughs> we, hey, listen, and, and, and right back at you, my friend. I'm really proud of what you've been doing. Um, you know, covering the NBA, covering hoops, doing the anchor and the reporting, the TV, moving all over the place. Because that's what you have to do yeah. uh, in this business. You got to always move here and there. Um, obviously, uh, your Celtics don't really have to do much right now. They've got to wait the winner between uh, Dallas and Minnesota. I still think that series is over. I still think it's Dallas's series to win. I. I thought going into the other night, though, Jonathan, you needed that clean game from Kyrie and Luka, right? And even though they scored some points, they had seven combined turnovers. They were trying to scratch and claw even when they were down a couple points in that fourth quarter or heading into the fourth quarter. Uh, defensively, they had too many lapses. I mean, Edwards finally goes off. Towns was, what, four or five from beyond the arc. You know, the adjustments right now that Dallas is going to have to make, in your estimation, to close out this series. Yeah, for me, I think it just comes down to getting that game from Luka and Kyrie, right, when both guys are locked in and performing. And I, honestly, Derek Lively missing that game plays a huge part as yep. well. I mean, he's a rookie, but he's been playing amazing. Just his ability to be that rim runner off the off the screen and roll. And you know what, Luka and Kyrie, the ability to just find different angles with those lob passes and defensively as well. So having a Gafford and a Lively together – makes Dallas that much more formidable, right? And so, look, it's basketball. Every night is not going to go the way you would expect. It. They've won three straight games before that loss, right? And so you would expect eventually. It's hard to sweep a team. We, we just see the, the Celtics do it against the Pacers, but a whole different situation, scenario. 
Minnesota still has a talented team, right? And so you would expect the Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns to step up and have some big games, right? And so keep in mind, Minnesota still has to win three straight games in the series, right? And so that is not an easy thing to accomplish. And so at the most, I could see Dallas winning in six games. You know, Minnesota coming back home, that home crowd can probably give them an extra boost. But I don't see this team beating the Dallas Mavericks three straight times with Minnesota. My, my main concern entering the series for them is outside of Ant-Man, who else is putting pressure on the defense off the bounce, right? Yeah. And offensively, you're making yourselves easy to contain when you, okay, we got Ant-Man. We know what Ant-Man's going to do. But outside of that, Jay McDaniels, Cat, Mike Conley, these guys aren't really creators in the mode of an Ant-Man, a Luca or Kyrie. These guys are more prone to contribute off of what Ant-Man is giving them. Or the defense is giving them spot up shooting those opportunities. Yeah, uh, Minnesota. By the way, I love Dallas and I get in four and a half, um, five, and I like the under in that one, two hundred nine and a half. Uh, Dallas, I think prior to the playoffs, you were looking at them and saying, "All right, can they make some noise once they get in?" I think they were sneaky good in the Western Conference, uh, and they are making some noise. Um, and to your point, I look at Edwards, and he's such an enigma, man. Because we want to sit there and say he's that next great player, like we were trying to do a couple of years ago with Tatum. You know, we can do it with Luca, we can do it with Joker. And then he has these off nights. I mean, he's just not there yet. I think there's that lack of maturity. When I say maturity, I think just understanding his role with this team and this franchise. And listen, this is a team that's kind of uh, new, if you will, when we talk about the postseason and the playoffs. And you know this as well as I do. Uh, the playoffs are a different animal, man. Like it's different if you're an athletic team and you can get up and down the floor. But if I got to lock down and get in your grill and play defense and I have to force you to get your offense going from a half court offense, that's when you need guys that can put the ball on the floor. They can create their shot. They can draw the double team. And and we're just not, we're not seeing it uh, right now with Minnesota Um, young team, you know, early to the party. I mean, does it at this point, listen, you've been covering the Celtics and I know you want to make a point on Edwards, but you've been covering the Celtics. Does it really matter at this point who they play? It does not matter, but it matters if Porzingis is available, right? Like Porzingis. You got bigger body. You need, I mean, with Minnesota or Dallas, right? Minnesota yeah. has yeah. Rudy and Cat and, and Dallas has Lively and Gafford, right? And so right now for Boston, it's Al Horford who is still playing as well as anyone could expect at this point in his career, right? Luke Cornett, who's their backup, but the other backup big, he's been hurt. And so outside of that defensively, how are you going to contain what Lyle Gafford can do and Cat too as well, right? And so, and also that extra rim protection. When you're talking about a driver like Ant-Man, you're talking about a Jaden McDaniels getting to the cup. You talk about Luka and Kyrie attacking as well. What shot blocking presence do you have at the rim right now? Al Horford isn't providing it right now. And that's just what it is. And so Porzingis hasn't played since the Miami series, right? And so they've been able to manage without him and in, in, in these series pretty quickly and to give him more rest. But at a certain point, if he does when he does come back, how much in game shape is he going to be? There's going to be some rust. And so to me, that is the key. It doesn't yeah. matter the opponent, but you have to have Porzingis regardless. So if Porzingis is out, it's going to be either way. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting series. Yeah, twelve thirty on the East Coast, midway through Thursday edition of Middays with Q. Rich Canunas here, Jonathan Marshall, WMUR, kind enough to join us for a couple moments. Angel Martinez behind the glass production show, keeping us on as we are part of Riptide Media Network. And of course, you can catch the show one hundred two nine. The game. Don't forget to download the app and uh, part of Broad Street South. Um. Let's go around the league for a minute. Tyrone, uh, Tyrone Lou, uh, he gets paid. You know, he's a young up and coming coach. Um, I guess the question is, you know, this new deal right now, you're going to be able to keep Paul George. You're going to be able to keep uh, James Harden, right? I, I like this move from a coaching standpoint because what it gives the Clippers, it gives them a lot more credibility, but more importantly, it gives them stability. And that's something that the franchise hasn't had in a while. Yeah. I'm, I mean, outside of all, I mean, I look at all the coaches around the league. Tyrone Lue has been probably one of my favorites, right? Just the consistency. Um, he was a guy that I know just like in the Sixers over the years, I say, that, that's a name that Sixers fans would definitely would love to see, right? Of course, they hired Doc Rivers, and we, we see how that's going yeah. with Nick Nurse being there. But great move as far as stability. We see these franchises, I mean, the Bucks, the Suns, 
the Lakers. Yep. You see, you know, a lack of stability when it comes to coaching is never going to work out in the end for you, right? Now, the Celtics are a different case. That's a special case. We'll talk about them soon. But more often times than not, you got to have that you got to have that consistency in voice and philosophy and identity and right. And having a Ty Lu there, you, you set that foundation. You check that off now, Q, but looking outside of that, what is the future of this team personnel wise? That's another big question that they have to figure out with PG, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden. These guys are past like that peak prime age when it comes to basketball in the NBA. And so, you look at the landscape of the Western Conference, these teams are younger and getting better yes. as the years go by. With the Clippers, you're getting older, but you're not getting better. Right. So how do you improve this team? How do you maximize what you have right here? Because you look at it, the window may be two years. And if PG leaves, is Kawhi and James Harden good enough to get it done in the Western Conference? When you see a Dallas, you see a Minnesota, Memphis is coming on strong. The Thunder are getting better. Who knows what Wimby and San Antonio. So the the Clippers may get left behind really soon in the next year or so. And so personnel wise, they got to figure out who they are real quick. But that's the NBA. I mean, yeah. think about it, right? Um, you know, if you, if, if you've got, if you've got the cap space, like for Philadelphia 76ers, for instance, right? Your uh, 76ers. Um, there's this buzz now, right? We're going to give Jimmy a three year max deal, right? Because we, we did him wrong, which is, I mean, what are we doing? If that's how you're running a friggin' franchise, Sign me. I'll come off the bench for ten minutes. I mean, honestly, like, what, 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 what are we, what are we doing here? I, no. I mean, that's. It, I, I can't. This is why. This is why I, I've crushed this team for years. This is why um, I'll never get coaches on. This is why I'll never get players on. I mean, I don't need to tell you. I mean, I've, I've crushed them on the air in this market, and, and. One of the stations carry them. I mean, it's a joke of a franchise. And now you're at the point where let's, you know, you're not getting LeBron James. No. LeBron James is LeBron James is, you know, all the Sixers need to just go and draft Bronny so they can entice and bait LeBron James. What is he? He's ranked 54. I think the Lakers have the 55th pick. Le 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 Bronny is going to play with LeBron. So stop the nonsense. Stop. It's just so annoying. A couple years ago, hey, LeBron James came to Philly. He's looking at a school for his kid. Holy crap. Now all of a sudden, LeBron James is coming to Philadelphia. I mean, it's just utterly ludicrous and ridiculous. And you know I love drilling and picking on your Philadelphia 76ers being a Knicks fan, right? It. Because I got crapped on for years, especially when they hired Phil Jackson to just sit there and smoke and joke and be a Zen master, and they didn't win diddly. <laughs> but now you look at your squad and you got to think to yourself, well, who's running the show there? Like Max deal for Butler. You know, do you, do, would you rather prefer Paul George or LeBron James? But neither is coming here. So it begs the question that I ask you, uh -huh. do star players want to come to Philly and play for the 76ers, i.e. play with Joel Embiid? <laughs> thank you, Angel. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I got, I got a little backup here because it was, it was getting a little, getting a little it heat on me. <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, Q, you, you, we've, I feel like we've been talking about, we've, we've been having the same conversation about the Sixers for almost a decade now, right? Yeah. Um. So, do star players want to come to Philly and play with Joel Embiid? I think if I'm a free agent and I see the opportunity to make a lot of money and play with a guy like Joel Embiid, I think that is enticing, right? Now, on the flip side of that, you got to look at the history when it comes to free agency in the NBA. In reality, there's only a few franchises that really have garnered certain players, right? And so over the years, the Sixers haven't been in a position to even do so. And so I think this summer will be an interesting revelation to see if the team and the city and Joel and B can really attract the marquee players because we have the cap space. Well, what was James Harden? Right. That was a Daryl Morey thing though. Right. But it does, it does not matter. Right. Yeah. Let's all I heard was, and I think even you might've said it when I was on the radio, you might've said it, um, that, 
you bring in James Harden and you add in Ben Simmons, <laughs> right? Shame on you. And Embiid and the role players. Mm. This is a team that should get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. I mean, look, with the Sixers, the, the, the question is, is this front office, can, can this front office be trusted to be competent and make competent personnel decisions, right? And so to me, looking at the headlines that I'm seeing, the Jimmy Butler situation, the Paul George situation, those guys, okay, you get one of these guys, right? And then what? Like you still have to build a roster yep. that can yep. compete against the Boston Celtics, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Pacers, the Knicks, because at, at, at its core, the Sixers franchise has been incompetent in the front office. It's been soft on the basketball court mentally, especially soft mentally, right? And so how do you change that core of what you've been for almost a, for a full for yeah for a decade now, right? It's, it's been a while now since we've been having the same conversations. You cannot get past a second round hump. And so the PG, the Jimmy Butler names, yes, it's a big name for you. But also we know just because you put big names together doesn't equate to playoff success. There's chemistry that you have to do. We saw the Bucks thought they oh, we got Dame. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna run through the Eastern Conference. It didn't work well, out. And they still fired their coach. <laughs> exactly. And so look, the, the Sixers to me. The Jimmy Butler headline about, oh, we did him wrong years ago. We want to sign him once again to show me how unserious this franchise is. I, I tweeted it out. This is why you have to salute competent front offices because this is just pure comedy what the Sixers have been over the years, right? And so you can literally trace back every wrong move that this team has made to lead them to this point that we're at now. The Celtics get Jason Tatum. You get Markel Fultz. Mm -hmm. The Celtics get Jalen Brown. Let's not talk about who you get right? The Ben Simmons year. And so you draft Mikel Bridges, you trade him for a guy who isn't even in the G League anymore. That's right. You give Tobias Harris a contract that wasn't even close to deserving. Horrible. To, Horrible. Give, you zero, to give you zero points, right? And so this front office over the years has proven itself to be incompetent. And Daryl Morey to me is on the clock. That's just yep. the bottom line. At what point do fans say enough is enough? We can't get past this second round hump. We're just wasting our time. Mm. Like, what are you really doing? Okay, so Par George and Jimmy Butler. Okay, these guys are mid thirties. They're pushing. Yep. It. They're yep. pushing it. So you're telling me there's a two year window with Joel and B's health and with Jimmy Butler or PG's prime. Operative right? word: his health. His He's health. never going to give you seventy five right. plus game. Never happening. And so, what semblance of hope are you giving fans right now? Yeah. What basketball team are you going to build to compete in the playoffs? You know what I mean? And so this is an important offseason for this franchise. This is an important offseason for Daryl Morey, for Joel Embiid. Like, this is it. There's no more excuses. You have the cap space. You can't blame the Tobias Harris contract anymore. This is it. You have Nick Nurse as a head coach, who I respect and I think is a really good head coach. And so this is it. This is it. Um, forgive me. I don't know if you retweeted this out. Mm -hmm. And you can clarify for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I saw this yesterday, and, and this is why just these shows drive me crazy. Um, they're talking about if Jalen Brown wasn't, or I'm sorry, Tatum wasn't happy that Jalen Brown won. Um, who won the Eastern Conference uh, Finals? Uh, Jalen Brown. Thank you. Yeah. So I guess the reaction by Tatum was it? I think they were talking about it on one of the ESPN talking head shows. Like it was a, it was literally a topic of conversation, like his emotion, his mood, like, you know, I mean, we're getting to the point where it's, it's, it's beginning, it's becoming unbearable to watch. Like, and then I got to hear Greenberg, hey, Greenberg, don't use the term, you know, Oh, I'm not capping. Like, seriously, stop, <laughs> stop. Yeah. You've got zero. When I say if there was one and, and listen, he's, 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 he's very good at what he does, even though he doesn't really have a staunch opinion, but don't, 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 don't use the term your, your street cred. I mean, <laughs> you no, know, just stop, stop, stop. But is this, you cover the Celtics. Yeah. You know, the ins and outs of this squad. I mean, <laughs> listen, <laughs> what are we trying to say there? A dysfunctional team right now, as they await the winner of, Dallas and Minnesota to play in the NBA finals. The, 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 the national media conversation when it comes to the NBA is so tiring. Um, there it's, it's, it's not, it, it's hot take central. 
it's 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 baseless comments and analysis. Like the Luca rumor. Remember we talked we about talked this on about OIP, that. the Luca rumor that hey, was, they don't want Luca on the floor. I thought <laughs> it was I thought it was ridiculous. Yeah. Because PJ Washington, Daniel Gafford are playing the best basketball of their careers because yeah. of Luca. Right? Um, when it comes to Tatum and Brown, to be as if they're as dysfunctional as people say they are, they're doing a pretty good job. This yep. is their six where well, they've they've they made six Eastern Conference finals in the last eight years. They've now made the NBA finals two times in the last three years. And so what, what they were questioning is, okay, Jalen Brown was given the award. A lot of the teammates and staff were around Jalen Brown, you know, cheering him on, pushing him yep. around. Tatum was in the background clapping. Jason Tatum, his personality, he's low key. He's laid back. He's not the boisterous guy. If you watch his press conferences, if you, even if you watch his style of play, that's just who he is. So to to take from oh he's just clapping he's not really happy for his teammate I don't I don't understand where they're getting this from and the conversation around Tatum and Brown is just ridiculous to to yeah. to be so successful before they've even reached the age of thirty and to have this nonsense and drama created um, by the national media it, it, it's it's ridiculous man like it, it really is I, still gotta I, go, they still got to go out and you know this not to cut you off they yeah. still have to go out and win the championship this year they have to no they this is this is the year right yeah. you run the table from the opening tip off you're the best team best record in the nba you run through the eastern conference first two rounds winning five games you, you sweep the pacers you guys have been through we talk about those those steps that teams have to take that these players have to take over the years you've taken the steps You've been through the battles. You know, you lost You lost to Miami heartbreaking last year. You lost to the Warriors in the finals the, the year before. And now you guys have the experience. You made the improvements getting a Drew Holiday, a Derek White, a Porzingis. You have the experience over both these teams that are left between Minnesota and Dallas. Pound for pound, your starting five is the best in the league. This is your year. Yeah. And so this all comes down to Brown and Tatum really being those guys when it matters most for the Celtics to win that championship this year. About uh, 15 or so minutes to play with. We'll take you up to 1 o'clock straight up. Uh, again, Thursday edition of uh, Middays with Q. Rich Canyon is here. Jonathan Marshall, kind enough to join us. Angel Martinez producing, keeping us on the air. You catch Angel 10 to 12, Martinez and company. And, of course, uh, he follows uh, Pete Shepard, uh, Monday to Friday, Pete Shepard show, 7 to 10. Got about two or so, three minutes. Um, let me get your thoughts on um, – and I know I asked you this again, but for the new audience tuning in, J.J. Redick to the Lakers. I mean, is this a fit? Is this the right move? Is he too, um, I guess, too early, if you will, removed, right? Recently removed from the NBA, too close, you know, yeah. doing the pod, being buddies with uh, LeBron. I mean, and can you imagine LeBron in his ear basically saying, hey, man, we got to draft my kid. Like, is this going to blow up here or what? It's, I don't, I don't trust the move. Um, and it, it's hilarious that the Lakers organization is trying to make a make it seem like they're doing this extensive coaching search, right? When you know LeBron and JJ have, have their podcast, which they started during the season, right? And so, <laughs> um, that that that's that was JJ's interview process right there. And they can say LeBron has no has no say in matters when it comes oh, to personnel. Look, we we can see what's going on, right? You don't have to say it, just. You don't have to say it. We, we we can see it behind the scenes, what, what's really happening, right? And so with J.J. Redick, look, from the podcast chair to the TV chair to a head coaching chair in the NBA, that's a huge step, right? You're not you, – it's not just basketball, right? You're dealing with personalities. Oh, yeah. Them. You're dealing with media now, a different – you're on the other side of the media now. You're dealing with a fan base. So there's a lot of pressures. And, and how do you still objectively do a podcast, by the way, when you're too close to it? That's that's what I'm saying. Like after a loss, are you going to hop on the mic and and and, and give your take and, and and criticize certain things? Like what? How, how is that going to look after a game? Oh, I mean, that would be must listen too. That would be the ballsiest of all balls podcast. If you're sitting there saying, "Hey, man, we got to start the show." I don't know what the yeah. hell LeBron was doing last night. Six of eighteen. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> listen, being a head coach in the NBA is hard. Any pro league is hard. If and and to not even have any assistant coaching experience, right? Um, to make that leap. For anybody, it's going to be difficult, right? And so for J.J. Redick, this is this is going to be interesting, right? Because also, not only are you making a big leap, 
the Lakers franchise over the years, as far as we talk about front offices, they've been one of the more unserious front offices yep. in the league. And so to be for this to be your head coaching job, you better make it count because yeah. I don't trust the front office to make the right decisions at all. Yeah. Um, before I let you get out of here, uh, Angel brought something up during his show, and I want to get yeah. proper context to it. Uh, he was talking about local newscasts in different markets. Now, obviously, you're up there in New Hampshire. You worked yeah. in what? The Memphis market. You were in Texas as well, yeah. right? Dallas. Mississippi that, as well. So, um, h- how much time do your broadcast devote to sports? I see you smiling right away. <laughs> Um, I feel like we're, we've been fortunate, um, here, here, my station up here in Manchester, um, for six o'clock, it's two minutes and 30 seconds. I I was ballpark. Yeah. Yeah. For, uh, for the, for the 11 o'clock it's four minutes, but now mind you, if there's breaking news or if there's big weather, who are they taking time from? Taking time from sports. Yeah. Um, but it's funny when I was in Memphis, I was a one man band in sports and I was only doing, and I was in sports news hybrid. And so over the years, these local markets, they're really if, if the first department that's going to be taken stripped away as far as personnel and time, it's going to be sports for sure. It's exactly what I was saying. I, I, and um, that's what we were saying, Angel, a- a- MMJ, multimedia journalist. Right. So Jonathan's going to go out. He's going to shoot. He's going to produce. He's going to edit. He's going to stick a microphone. He's going to be off camera and he's going to interview somebody. And then he's going to do the rap. He's going to yep. do his live shot, stand up, rap, send it out. And if he's lucky. If he's lucky <laughs> when he's in Dallas and Memphis and mosquitoes are all over the place in, 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 in Texas in the summertime, if he's lucky, they're going to air it. I would be pissed if they, if they squashed my stuff out on the field, I'd be like, are you freaking kidding me, man? And I tell people most of the work that we do is behind the scenes. We're only yeah. on TV for a couple minutes. <laughs> like most of the work, interviewing, editing, producing, stacking our rundown, most of the work is behind the scenes. We're on TV yeah. a small percentage of the time on a weekly basis. People don't realize that. <laughs> so there you go, Angel. You got your answer. <laughs> yeah. I do have to ask you, I would be remiss. I do have to ask you, all jokes aside, real quick, passing a Bill Walton, man. I I posted this. Um, you know, if if you looked at his career mm-hmm. when he was drafted, Rip City, Portland, down 0-2 to the Sixers, him and Bobby Gross, they come back, they rip off four in a row, they beat Dr. J in that squad. You know, he was nagged. You know, foot injuries nagged him, man. But man, I'll tell you. He was great for the sport of basketball, an ambassador, and you know one of the all-time great performances in in an NCAA history in the championship game. Right? I mean, I think he was perfect. Yeah, you know, with UCLA and a great broadcaster. Yeah. So growing up, I knew more of him as a broadcaster. Yeah. Right? And as you go back and look at what he really did and who he was as a basketball player, he's one of the best post players we've ever had in the game. Right. And so there's that, and also what he did in broadcasting, just a. a, a a joy to watch, right? Anytime you listen to Bill Walton and, and, and see his analysis on TV, his interviews, just brought a smile to your face. Two years ago during the finals, I stepped out, out of the elevator at the garden, and here comes Bill Walton just randomly walking around with a crowd of fans around him, like just a true man of the people, right? I don't know where Bill Walton came from. He's just walking the streets of Boston, coming inside the garden, people snapping pictures of him. He's being kind and gracious to people. Like just – you can't help but smile when you see him and, and, and hear him talk just – a great loss, but a great life, and he he brought he brought joy to a lot of people. 
Yeah. yeah. Well said, my friend. Don't forget, follow Jonathan on X at John underscore Marshall three. He'll join us next week. We'll break down the NBA finals. Um, always appreciate you jumping on board. Doesn't matter. Radio stream podcast does not matter. We always love yeah. having you. Like we say, we have to pivot. Sometimes we got to evolve, right? We got to evolve. We got to pivot. I like you know? it. But it's a good thing, Jonathan, you came on because I rarely get to pick on this guy. Rarely ever get to pick on him. Twice in one day. Knicks, uh, same place where we listen, are. Listen, listen. When, when Jonathan, <laughs> you know, started out in, in radio, had his cup of coffee, he had no freaking hair on his face. Now this cat is sought after. He's an NBA guru. He's an anchor. He's getting opportunities all over. He's getting married. I mean, look at this. Now he's, I think he's got a five o'clock shadow. You know? <laughs> he's got a little hair on the chest. So he's, he's evolved in front of my eyes. And like I said, like a, a, a proud father, I just, um, you know, it's a, uh, it's amazing to see because he stayed the course. Trust the and process guys. Not- hey, trust the process, Angel. That's right. That's exactly it. And oh, in the moment with that nonsense. Nonsense. Get, yeah. guy, get out of here. We'll talk next week. <laughs> all right, fellas. <laughs> Thanks, right, Andy. Appreciate you, my friend. Um, all right, there you have it, Jonathan Marshall. Um, Angel, we got to take a uh, one more time out here. All right. All right. As long as we got – listen, you got that on the record. I don't ever want to hear that jingle again. <laughs> Um, all right, we'll take a quick time out. Got about uh, five or six to wrap things up. We'll kind of um, do a little housekeeping here, uh, but good stuff from Jonathan Marshall. Appreciate him jumping on board. We'll take you up to one o'clock straight up. To some people, the sound of a baby babbling doesn't mean much. But that's not necessarily true. By six months, they're combining vowels and consonants. By nine months, they're trying out different kinds of sounds. And by 12 months, their babbling is beginning to take on some meaning. Especially if there's no babbling at all. Little to no babbling by 12 months or later is just one of the possible signs of autism in children. Early screening and intervention can make a lifetime of difference and unlock a world of possibilities. Take the first step at AutismSpeaks.org. A public service announcement brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. The following is made possible by Dad. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. (laughs) The Dad Joke. Corny grown worthy but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids why do you have to be careful when it's raining cats and dogs because you might step in a poodle (laughs) and kids that spend more time with their dads grow up to be smarter more successful can i tell you a cat joke just kidding (laughs) and with any luck funnier adults why didn't the skeleton go to the dance Because he didn't have any body to go with. Dad jokes rule. So take a moment to make a moment and give your kid a laugh. (laughs) It's as easy as going to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. (laughs) That's really funny. Right now, our country feels divided. But there's a place where people are coming together. I gotta tell you, I was nervous to talk to someone so different than me. Me too, but I'm glad we are. Love Has No Labels and One Small Step are helping people with different political views, beliefs, and life experiences come together through conversation, and it feels good. Wow, your story is so... uh, Interesting. Yeah. (laughs) When people actually sit down, talk, and listen to one another, they can break down boundaries and connect as human beings. At lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step, you can listen to amazing, life-changing conversations and find simple tools to start a conversation of your own. I know one thing. This conversation gives me hope. It gives me a lot of hope, too. Take a step toward bringing our country and your community together by having the courage to start a conversation at lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step. A message from StoryCorps, Love Has No Labels, and the Ad Council. People do some pretty cool things in their 40s and 50s. Why should saving for retirement be any different? I mean, they go back to college... learn new instruments, start skateboarding, 
Okay, maybe that one's not for everybody, but saving for retirement is. With aceyourretirement.org, you can get on track with your retirement savings no matter your age. Just have a three-minute chat with Avo, the friendly digital retirement coach from AARP. You'll get personalized recommendations based on your input that are easy to understand and work with your lifestyle. It's quick, easy, and free. Plus, it's sponsored by AARP, so you know they got your back. Snarly move, Dad. Thanks, sweetie. So wherever you are in your retirement savings journey, head to aceyourretirement.org and start chatting with Avo today. That's aceyourretirement.org. A message from AARP and the Ad Council. All right, fast approaching the one o'clock hour as we start to put a bow on this Thursday edition of uh, Middays with Q. Appreciate Jonathan Marshall jumping on board. Excellent NBA insight. I really don't think it matters if it's Dallas or Minnesota. It's all on Boston this year. That's why they were one of the uh, prohibited favorites coming out of the Eastern Conference. Um, Do not forget to not only follow myself, follow Angel, follow Pete Shepard. We always appreciate you guys commenting, tweeting in. You guys, for tomorrow, if you guys want to call in as well, 727-858-6650. But uh, point being, you got Pete Shepard Monday to Friday, 7 to 10 right here on Riptide Media Network. And then, of course, Martinez and Company with uh, mi hermano, Angel Martinez, 10 to 12, really does a good job of kind of mixing in a little, um, you know, outside the box thinking when it comes to the world of sports, adding in some really good human interest stories as well and some great interviews. And then myself, 12 to 1 uh, with uh, Middays with Q. Do not forget also download the Sports Radio 1029, the game app, Broad Street South. Support what Angel has been doing on those networks respectively. Um, And I believe, uh, do you, did you say you have the uh, Predators this weekend in, uh, in Espanol? Oh, there he is. Look, I I feel as though you're like the, um, what was that movie where they shrunk the guy? Not honey, I shrunk the kids, but what was that sci-fi movie? Ah, crap, I forgot. But oh, I could be the great gazoo (laughs) at the same time. And and listen, is your microphone on? See, it's on. Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hold on. Listen, that's my bad because my volume was down. So go ahead. <laughs> You're gone. <laughs> Genius. So it means the music I've been playing back. You haven't even heard on the way back in. Ay, Dios mio. No, I didn't. What did you play? Oh, no, no. You didn't. Well, hell, here, I'll play for you now since forget about it. Uh, am I going to already call it a violation? My goodness. A rookie mistake, man. Hey, at least I didn't get up and try to plug in my friggin' laptop like <laughs> like someone did yesterday. By the way, I know this is a, a comment from earlier this morning, but Lena uh, Miller, who just tuned in not too long ago, and this is because of Pete this morning. She said, uh, you have a halo behind you. Pete this morning, because he was doing the uh, the show from his house uh, in La Cocina, as he likes to say. Uh, so he's got a mirror that's like directly behind him. Ah. Uh. But because, yeah, when he's looking down, it looks like he has a perfect halo uh, above his head. So, Lena, thanks for thanks for a late message. But, yeah, that was from uh, – well, See, you can tell I have, the, I have the fan going on in the background. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah. By the way, have you noticed not one sound? I know. I'm surprised. What's she doing? Okay. A couple walks this morning, a little playtime when I was working out, um, and then I put on the classical music channel. Or I put on Law and Order. Um, and all right. Just, she plops down. Nice. We this. We're going to need this Monday to Friday if we're trying to grow this thing. We're going to uh, we're yeah. going to need Kiki to just be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. And by um, way, to bring back an old yeah. sounder because uh, Joey B had made a comment earlier. Hey, can use at one o'clock when I'm getting off the air. No. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're getting because you're getting behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the old sounder. <laughs> what um, what do you have planned for tomorrow's show from ten to twelve? Uh, tomorrow I am going to have Sheila from Sheila Music. She was supposed to be on with us uh during the Cinco de Mayo celebration, but because she was uh flying in between Miami and Texas, she didn't have the opportunity to come on. So she will be on tomorrow at ten thirty, followed by. Uh, and I seem, I believe the last thing could be no same. And I always say hus- that no scene because of uh, just to, to pronounce it because of, he's seen all over the, uh, the trenches, but he'll be on with me tomorrow at 11 o'clock and then more guests coming up come uh, next week. So I'll have the lineup up there. Also my, 
partner in crime when it comes to the Spanish play-by-play broadcast next Friday will be Alonso Garcia Puentes. He'll be on with me next Friday. I'm trying to get him on a little bit earlier. And there'll be more guests to come. So yeah, that's the lineup for mañana. Is it hyphenated? Garcia Fuentes? Sí. Is it? Interesting. Yeah. Um, no, you guys did a really good job uh, calling the games. And I like how it's set up. You know, you have the box. Obviously, you have the wide shot. And then you have you guys um, in the press box. So uh, that's really good stuff. Um, all right. Let's uh, wrap it up. I don't want to hold you. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be back in the saddle from 12 to 1. Uh, we'll get into the NBA playoffs, see if uh, my Rangers can eke out a win tonight. A little more baseball news. I also want to start to creep into what's going on in the world of uh, combat sports and boxing. We're going to start incorporating um, some odds and some plays as well. So we'll have a little fun with that. But as always, do not forget, follow Pete Shepard. Uh, tune into the show Monday, Friday, 7 to 10. Angel producing co host as well. And then you got Martinez and company. Please follow Angel on all social media platforms. Download the at 102.9 The Game, part of Broad Street South. And uh, keep supporting Riptide Media Network. I appreciate you guys always chiming in. Got a lot of feedback on Facebook and on X. Appreciate Jonathan Marshall keeping us on the air. Angel Martinez, Mi Hermano, producing the show as well and uh, pushing all the right buttons. Give Jonathan a follow. Excellent job. On the NBA, love when I get him on the air, uh, watching that man grow, that young kid turn into a man and do a great job, radio, podcasting, television, following the NBA. He should be a league insider one day, uh, certainly on the right path. And as always, appreciate you guys tuning in to a Thursday edition of Middays with Q. Everyone have a good sports Thursday. We will talk to you right back here, 12 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. As always, I'm Rich Quinones. Hasta luego, buen día.